But first, tonight, the former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott and his wife Pauline set out to discover why down south is different from up north. Former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott and his wife Pauline are northerners, born and bred. We love the north, we are the north. We may be chippy about it, we've got reasons for it. But since John became an MP in 1970, they've led a double life, spending almost as much time down south as at home in Hull. I love chip watching. <laughs> but what is the current state of England's north-south divide? Well, it's a question that's been dividing the nation for years. So is there such a thing as the north-south divide, or is it a London, rest-of-the-country divide? Here to discuss our self-confessed southerner, who's the new editor of The Lady magazine, and I promised I wouldn't say it, but sister of Boris, Rachel Johnson, <clears throat> broadcaster Ollie Mann, and champion of the north, Sue Carroll. It does amuse me as a Yorkshireman, uh, Sue, when you get John Prescott. And I think they think all Yorkshiremen are like that, and I really ought to be talking on this programme like that and give me meat and two veg and nothing else, nothing fancy. Um, <laughs> but there's lots of different kinds of Yorkshiremen, he's one of them. I mean, do you yeah. think there is a big north-south divide? Well, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what I think Geordies would say to a southerner, that they don't have the advantages of our disadvantages. So I think <laughs> there is a huge division, really, and, and the northerners are, like John says, I think they're a bit chippy. There is a bit of a chip on the shoulder. They do think they've had a bit of a hard time. It all stems from the Industrial Revolution when it was the grim north, you know, and they feel that their money, their wealth was earned, the money in the country was earned there, but it was taken away from them. So I think there is kind of a, a residual um, semi-loathing of the south, to tell you the truth. I mean, there's one guy on the, I've seen this programme, yeah. there's one guy who actually, when he's asked, he's a northerner, and he said, somebody says, what do you think of the south? He said, the best thing to come out of the south is the M1. <laughs> and, oh, is that fair, do you think, or is this an old saw that's just being revived? Well, look, there is clearly a cultural difference between the North and the South, isn't there? But people are divisive, you know, there's a cultural difference between North and South London. You know, I tease my mate who lives in Crystal Palace that, because he doesn't live near the Tube, he's not anywhere anyone would want to be. And I'm right. Um, <laughs> and that's very much the case with the country as well, and I think the fact that it's John and Pauline you know, they're sort of like Labour's Neil and Christine Hamilton now, aren't they? They're a bit of a joke. I love them, oh, but they yeah, are a bit of a yeah. joke. They're funny. They're more but... Vera and Jack, yeah, but... to be honest. <laughs> Vera and Jack. I do really like that. They're a little bit Marlene and Boise, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but the point that is them doing this journey shows that I think, you know, really people treat this with a pinch of salt, this yeah. north-south divide. Yeah. Or if well, you're from the north, it, gravy. Does the Lady magazine, Rachel, you're the editor of the Lady, I mean, do you believe in the north-south divide? Well, oddly enough, our readers are almost all in the South, and so I'm, this is a shameless bid for the Northern reader, because um, <laughs> I think that We need to prove there says, are ladies in the North. There yeah. are ladies everywhere. Yeah. Being a lady is not where you're born or how rich you are or where you went to school. It's an attitude. And, but I think North and South is also an attitude. And what I've noticed about this is that people are proudly Northern, but no-one goes around saying, I'm a southerner with that sort of same fierce pride it's that you saw. It's quite understandable, isn't yeah, it, true. really, you see? Because oh, there's not like much to be proud Clough. of, is Brian there? Brian Clough in that movie, The Death. Oh. oh! Well, I just oh. wondered if you were awake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I am a southerner myself. Mm. Um, but I don't go around saying, I, you know, I come from the southwest. Although maybe I should. And I think that part of the reason is, is that the North want to keep the North to themselves because they can see that London and the South East are highly overpopulated. There's huge competition for jobs. And they want to, it's a kind of secret how underpopulated it is, how you've got empty roads, beautiful scenery, lovely shops. People queuing up in the traffic in Leeds every morning would be. Um, well, I you don't know, know but that's my that. vision. Yeah. That's why I think there's a whole rash of books celebrating the Honestly, North. Rachel, you should go. It's only a three hour train journey up to been. Newcastle. I have You'd been, see it. Carol, I love it. <laughs> also, my mother in law lives in the North. Does she? Yes, she does. So you know that. Look, are, in are we allowed big to say Scotland is the North? Oh, you're chipping in this. You're just trying to get a word in edgewise between them. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, it's not that much of a secret in the sense that loads of people that I know that are a few years younger than me going to university, they want to go to Blackpool, to Liverpool, uh, to Manchester, Newcastle, yeah. Sheffield. So I think word's out, actually, that no the North is good fun. <laughs> um, and I think all this rivalry stuff really is just a bit of a laugh as well. Isn't it really just bringing colour to life, Sue, really? You know, it gives us a bit of colour to have this kind of... It's almost a, is it a mock rivalry well, it's or is there substance? Well, there? I think it can be a mock thing. And, you know, it's like rival football teams in mm. a sense, isn't it? And, of course, we do like to maintain 
maintain that rivalry, but I genuinely do think there is a difference. In humour, there's a difference. Culturally, there's a difference. Um, we have better fish and chips in the north, and that's just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you look at John and Pauline, I think the difference is, and I, I'm going to lose the, my entire South East, read, South East readership when I say this, but look at how glamorous Pauline looks and the yeah. effort she makes with her yeah, hair. Yeah, she's beautiful. And yeah. I think that's a very northern thing. People really dress up to go out. And, yeah, and, we, and I think the South could actually learn something from John and Pauline. I know we've, the media have knocked John's accent for years and made jokes about Pauline's hair, but I think they're a great example. Oh, I disagree with that. I think... Huh? John Prescott has a chip on his shoulder, a northern chip on his shoulder. Oh, he's because hilarious. Because, because he thinks that everyone's been taking the mickey out of his accent, but actually they've just been taking the mickey out of the way he talks in other ways. He's yeah. playing up to it. He but ate a chip yeah. butty on television yeah, he ate chip just butty, now. Yeah, but the point is, no-one brings up William Hague's northernness or David Blunkett's northernness or Sherry Blair's northernness. Well, yes, but actually, John is a class warrior. He's more... He's more obviously interested in the class divisions and truth in the north so well he's fascinated by it but i think that when you watch this documentary you'll see that what really emerges is that there is a class division in britain not a geographical mm, one mm. Yeah. it seems also to me that when you come to london there's a lack of immediate friendliness i mean when i, I come into this program from from the country i lived down south but in the country and i lived up in yorkshire before when i come into london i have to remember not to smile and say hello to people in the morning yeah. and i think that's sad <laughs> yeah. 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 You'd, be, you'd be put in the loony bin if you said hello to everybody in the street. People think you, they move away, don't Gerard they? Gerard Hoffnung, many years ago, gave advice to tourists during the Festival of Britain in the 1950s, and it was rather malicious, mischievous advice to tourists, and he said, on entering a railway compartment, be sure to shake hands with all the passengers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should. My thanks to Rachel, to Ollie and to Sue. Thank you.